So in today's current movie landscape, a lot of big budgets are being saved for superheroes and franchises, um, and A Cure for Wellness is not one of those. So how hard did you have to fight for this? Well, we're trying to, you know, remember what it's like to go to the movies and not know what you're going to see. I think so much of, of you know, the, the process of trying to eventize, uh, you know, the movie-going experience just to get people out of their house, you know, to come and, and pay too much for popcorn and <laughs> come to a theater. Uh, it's a big ask, right? So um, that's why you see all these kind of, you know, this, this sense that either the infinitely reducible concept or the, the something you're familiar with, right? right. Um, you've, you've played the, the, the video game or you've been to the theme park or whatever. And um, I think, you know, we're sort of saying if everybody's sort of vacated the middle, maybe there are opportunities there. And we'd like to try to... You know, for those of us who remember what it was like to go to a movie and not know what's going to happen. And, I mean, this is a perfect example. And I guess I'm kind of curious, you know, just for my own sake, was this a pitch or did you have a proof of concept in place when you came to sell A Cure for well, uh, Wellness? Well, I, uh, Justin Haith, the writer, and I had sort of developed the story. Okay. Um, and we pitched it to Arnon Milchon of New Regency, which mm -hmm. is um, sort of a, uh, a mini major, you know. And right. they have their distribution deal with Fox. but um, and. Yeah, we just, you know, the combination of sort of passion and hypnosis, we were able to... <laughs> were there any skeptics, maybe? <laughs> sure, always, you know. I mean, look, it, the data says don't do this, right? right. You know, so um, that just makes it all the more interesting. The data said don't make a pirate movie, or you can't, you don't know how to make an animated movie, or, you know, I mean, it's so it's nice to get to that place. And how many pirate movies ago was that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when they said that? Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, it's nice to, anytime somebody says, you know, you know, you're crazy. It just makes it that much more interesting. So the character arc of Lockhart, who is this, you know, overworked, very ambitious man, um, his kind of under themes and undertones are very, they seem personal and passionate, you know. Where did that story kind of come from in you? Well, we sort of, everything sort of worked backwards from this idea of taking some places benign and tranquil as a health spa and sort of turning it on its head. And then, and then saying, well, what, what if this place was sort of, you know, had been around for a long time and, mm -hmm. and, and was an ancient, you know, um, castle on a hill sort of looking down on modern man and, and offering a diagnosis um, and and if that diagnosis is a is almost a form of absolution right you're not responsible because you're not well that's the opiate right so then you create the characters who might be vulnerable to that so um, yeah Lockhart has he's he's got it in spades I mean he's gonna do whatever it takes to get ahead and uh, and you know, and he's vulnerable to that diagnosis, but what if the cure is worse than the disease? That is what the film suggests. And then I guess, you know, another question is, with a movie this ambitious, you know, do you have any advice for maybe filmmakers trying the same thing that you want to set out to do and that you did achieve? Um, advice to filmmakers, uh, you, uh, just always be shooting, you know, that's my advice. Just, you know, grab a camera, grab your iPhone, whatever it is, just, you know, you, you, you're never gonna get the ideal set of circumstances. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Pleasure.